afternoon. Uh, we're here for a special meeting for the Frankfurt Plant Board. I'm Anna Marie Pavlik Rosen, Chair of the Frankfurt Plant Board. To my right, I have Walt Baldwin, Vice Chair, Don Hale, Member, Ralph Ludwig, Mender, Member, and Steve Mason, Member. James Liebman could not be with us today. He's um, on vacation, I believe. So um, our first order of business is to request permission to go into a closed session. Copy. I, miss it. I know I have it, but it's lost. Um, move to call a closed session pursuant to KRS 618101F for discussions regarding potential candidates for appointment to the general manager position. So moved. Second. We have um, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, item number three on the agenda. Res resolve expenditure amount for energy, environment, economics, E3 analysis of the proposed solar PPA and consider extending to include natural gas PPA. So this is an item which I added to the agenda. And um, my reasons for doing that is that um, Prior to joining KYMEA um, as an AR member, FPB has only made five-year power commitments um, with energy supplier and with only one energy supplier, Kentucky Utilities, LG&E. With KYMEA's AR contract and power purchase agreements for natural gas and coal, FPB has made 10-year commitments. Um, we're now looking at a fundamentally different question we're looking at building generation. It would be a lease agreement, but still we're, we're looking at actually being active in the generation of electricity. So it's a different, different change. It's important that we are knowledgeable on all of the aspects of this decision and be fully educated. And one way to do that is to have input from a consultant specifically to us looking at the position that we'd be in in the market. Um, things that we need to be really aware of are it's a 20-year commitment so twice as long as the commitment we recently made and uh, four times the commitments that FPB has made in the past um, again we'd be directly engaging in energy generation which is a different situation that we've dealt with in the past um, we're also looking at purchasing energy for 2022 without knowing what our energy forecast is. Um, we haven't really studied and considered the very changing, quickly developing renewable energy market. And from the video presentation that we had concerning the power purchase agreements that is proprietary, um, we know that the MISO market has surplus energy, including renewable energy, wind, and um, that it's trading far below what our contract price is for capacity. Um, it would only take six to nine months to build a solar photovoltaic, photovoltaic system. Um, we could use 2019, 2020, and 21 to determine the best choice. So as a board, being our major responsibility to be educated to make the best decision for our customers, um, we should try to find our ways to educate ourselves on all of this, you know, the entire situation, the whole picture, before uh, making a 20-year commitment. And that's um, what I was saying as introduction to the discussion I hope we'll have now. I guess I had a few things to that point. You know, the other thing to keep in mind about you know, the 20-year commitment is that's that's not just a 20-year commitment to um, to the solar PPA. You know, we've also got a natural gas com commitment coming down the road that's going to be another 15 years. And, you know, those are commitments that are beyond just those resources. Those are commitments to KYMEA. So as other resources come in front of the, in front of the KYMEA board along that 20-year time frame, 
um, that ex those could continue to extend our our window and our commitment out to KYMEA. So our ability to adjust if uh, our prices start going up beyond what we expect and start becoming uneconomic, signing these long-term commitments limit our ability to be able to control that. And we could be stuck in a situation where our prices <laughs> are, are not economic and are a drain on our community you know, for decades into the future and have no way to adjust. And, you know, you see, you know, examples of that in the past, you know, Paducah had, Paducah and Princeton had a similar experience when, when they went down the same route of, of forming a joint action agency. And the other comment I would make about the, a little bit more towards the project in general is that, you know, solar prices um, for the last, uh, I think, what is it, um, from, from 2010 to 2016 declined 15 percent every year so we're signing up you know right now potentially for a, a piece of a piece of construction that won't be available until 2022 and all the projections are that those solar costs will continue to go down year over year so we're locking in by starting so early, by starting three years early, we're locking in higher costs for construction, which turn into higher costs for us once we get to the point of actually utilizing the power. And a few of the numbers I would throw out that are a little one-sided is, you know, some of the recent um, recent PPAs that have been signed. There was recently, a th uh, this last June, there was a 30 megawatt PPA signed for $24.90 per megawatt hour. And that um, will be online uh, in 2020. So they signed it in June, it'll be online in 2020, and they're paying $24.90 for that. Who's they? It's, uh, it's being constructed by Arizona Solar. It, I assume it's just in their market there, I'd have to go look. <coughs> And then there's another one. It's uh, there's another one being constructed by or Orgus Energy, and um, that one will be on. It's I don't have the pricing for that one, but that one will be online December thirty first, twenty twenty. And then there's also another uh, uh, set of requests that came from Xcel Energy in Colorado, and their um, costs associated with those were uh, twenty three dollars per megawatt hour through twenty seven dollars per megawatt hour. And the notable thing about those is that some of those also included storage to go with the solar, and that added from half a cent to 0.8 cents to the actual cost of construction, but dramatically increased the, the value of, of the asset because it then became possible to use that asset as uh, a schedulable, dispatchable resource. You could use it to offset your peaking costs and it became very economic in, 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 those, in those situations. Um, those were kind of the big numbers that I have out there. And then there's one other that uh, closed last month that was $23.76 per, um, per megawatt hour. And another for Central Arizona that uh, just, just closed two days ago that was uh, $24.99 per megawatt hour. So I know those seem a lot one-sided because we can't talk about the cost of our solar, but for folks that have seen that PPA, it gives you some sense of what's out there on the market and what those time scales are and what, what, um, what those commitments are. Another important thing I think to keep in mind about you know, the PPA we've got in front of us is that you know, we've got a 20-year deal in front of us. The, the life expectancy of, of those assets are uh, beyond 25 years. The warranty for the asset is 25 years. So there's at least, you know, five to 10 years of additional utility coming out of that plant that we're paying to build through our lease payments. And we may not necessarily, the way it's structured now, be able to benefit from that lower cost availability of power post that, that 20 year time frame. So all of that kind of comes together with the idea that I just, I really think it's important that we have somebody that can put all this together for us in a package that has deep understanding in the industry and can, um, uh, can help us, you know, make the right choices here you know, moving forward. Again, these are big long-term commitments, and by signing, you know, this PPA and the, and the following, you know, natural gas PPA, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, we're in for life with KYMEA. 
And I think that's a decision that, you know, we shouldn't make lightly and we should have as much information moving in and moving into that decision as possible. So the question at this point is, do we want to um, spend $9,000 on a full study of the solar power purchase agreement that will affect us for 20 years into the future, starting in 2022? And I guess additionally extend it so that we can have similar guidance on the, the natural gas PPA that we see, you know, for construction of a new natural gas plant that will be coming in front of us in another 60 days. You know, when you criticize the 20-year contract, 20-year contracts are, are industry standard in solar because of the investment that is made. So to, to think that we're going to get a, a solar contract for five years or something, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, and that's not, that's not what I meant to project. You know, you're right, you know, when you're building new solar, you're kind of in it for the life of the life of the array. But <coughs> this is a little different, you know. We're not, you know, and it, that's, that's actually an interesting point. You know, if you look at, you know, uh, the two folks participating in this P -P PPA, you've got Owensboro Municipal Utility, who is participating directly with the solar owner. And so that gives them no long-term commitment to KYMEA. So they're only committing to this particular um, asset. And additionally, the asset is cheaper for them because they don't have the additional overhead of KYMEA in there. Um, <coughs> Whereas we, by signing up for this 10 year, this 20 year term, we're not only committing to this resource, but we're opening ourselves up for commitments to other resources that, that come along after, such as the, the natural gas PPA that'll be in front of us in, in 60 days. So the discussion is less about, um, about whether or not you're gonna get a five year PPA or 10 year PPA, you're not. You're gonna get PPAs that are gonna be 20 or 25 years, one of the two. The, the, the bigger question here is, 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 bigger questions here are, are those the most economic resources we, we could be pursuing? Are there other things we could be consuming, pursuing? Is there solar plus storage that's, that's potentially more economic and, and of higher value to the agency as a whole and, and the Frankfurt Plant Board? And um, how much does this expose our, how much does this extend our risk to the agency, to the agency moving forward? And don't you think that KYMEA has asked those questions? You know, KYMEA wants to be successful. They want to be able to give the municipalities the lowest prices for energy that they possibly can. Because in, if they don't, then we're not being successful as far as getting better rates than what KU did. So I would think that KYMEA would have asked those questions. They would have explored the, the possibilities that you're talking about, and, and they came to this decision. Well, I think that KYMEA's position on this different than ours. I think, um, you know, KYMEA's responsibility is, or goal, I would expect, and I probably shouldn't even speak to KYMEA, but I guess, you know, our goal is to make sure we're minimizing rates. You know, where we are now, um, you know, I think our sole goal shouldn't be, you know, being comfortable that um, we're cheaper than KU, because as we know, there's a lot more value to be had out there beyond, you know, where KU is, you know, as we learned, um, last November and was refreshed um, just these last couple of weeks, you know, the, the, the lg and &E KU costs are here and KYMEA costs are here and the market cost is down here. So there's a, there's a lot of value that we left on the table with, with the resources that we have. And we left value on the table with the selection of resources that were presented to us in KYMEA and we left even greater value on the table um, <coughs> with not looking outside of that that limited resource set that we looked at in the beginning and all of that translates into tens of millions of dollars in in excess costs that that you know our customers are going to be paying but when we're looking at the cost of solar are we t you know uh, you, you talk about the cost going down but we know that the the president has put a tariff <coughs> on solar panels which mm -hmm. is is making the cost of going to make the cost of solar more expensive um so the the tax credit 
that is being offered right now is being reduced, so that's going to make the cost of solar more expensive. So if we're looking at, at delaying having renewable energy in the form of solar as part of our portfolio <coughs> and waiting until 2022 or, or sometime down the road to do that, from the current environment, I, I don't think we can necessarily say that it's going to be cheaper because of federal policies. Well, there's multiple things there. One, you know, the, the, the ITC is certainly a consideration there. All those numbers that I shared with you are unsubsidized. They're all numbers without the ITC. Um, whether or not, you know, the agency that we would be working with would be able to monetize the ITC or potentially mon monetize the US, uh, USDA REAP grant is, you know, I, I don't know. We don't have exposure to that level of, that level of, of what's going on inside that contract. but. Um, all of the projections that we have from EIA and from NREL are all non-subsidized, so the ITC isn't a component, the, the, the REAP grants aren't a component, and they still project, you know, a year-over-year -year, uh, reduction in cost of 7% every year through 2022. And there's also more, you know, that goes into, um, that goes into a, a solar <coughs> installation than just the modules, you know, just the things that would be affected by by the, the, the tariff that's been added to the import of Chinese solar modules. There's also, the majority of the cost is actually moving away from the actual modules and a lot of it's into the soft costs, into the site development and, and into all those types of things, into the inverters, you know, and there's been a lot of, you know, cost reductions with the inverters. There's a lot of other components in there. But the short of that is, is that um, the numbers that I shared and the reductions that I shared aren't dependent on the ITC. The ITC existence actually makes those numbers better. If it's not there, it doesn't make those numbers worse. And I would like to add a little bit to that. Uh, the tariff um, would hopefully, the goal is to grow solar production within the United States. So three years from now, there is some U.S. production. Um, there would be hopefully more. And, um, and that gets into um, having E3 take a look at, you know, what are the projections if you wait three years? Um, it looks like costs are going down. And why um, invest in something when in a variable market when we don't have to at this point? We could wait and maybe make a, a better um, decision. And what we have contracted for now is not the lowest cost energy. And would we be making that mistake again? Which it certainly seems like based on the pricing we see and what's available in the market. But the bigger the bigger question there is is that you know all of this might not turn into you know we don't go ahead and move forward with the PPA now that doesn't get constructed until 2022. It may well you know one of the one of the options that we could look at is is just simply a way to monetize those cost reductions instead of you know you know. 12 to 15 percent, whatever that number comes in, comes in at, you know, year over year reductions, some way for that to actually flow back into the agency instead of it automatically turning into profit for the construction company, for it actually be becoming something that the, actually the rate payers get to benefit from. Some way to incorporate that. You know, most of, most of the PPAs I've been able to find through research don't have that kind of time frame. So you don't have, you know, that big of a lag, but some of the ones I have found do have elevators in them like that that respond to the market. And these are the types of thing again that having somebody that has, you know, deep knowledge in the in, in the in the industry that could help <coughs> us, you know, have the appropriate view and the appropriate vision to what those Im economic impacts could be to make sure we secure the lowest rates, you know, for our customers that are available here. Which again, as Anna Marie mentioned, we, isn't what happened with with the first round of PPAs that we signed, that we that we're committed to now. So, um, Steve, you had made our last motion on how to um, have a review done by E3. Do you have any further thoughts on that? I understand what they can do, and I'm satisfied with what they can do within the parameters of those monies. Well, they came back and gave us an estimate of you know nine thousand, and we're we're not at that. And then no, it I mean, also they said they could do the review the contract and point out the issues and stuff um, for the for whatever's remaining in the uh, in the uh, in that contract right now. 
They said they could give us, tell us what it says, and uh, which is what I asked, and, and point out the issues for us and what's remaining. So even if we look at the full cost of $9,000, apportioned over, apportioned over 20 years, um, the cost is low. But we're really not talking 9,000, we're talking 9,000 plus whatever they would then charge for also the natural gas component. So again, we're looking at an open-ended contract. Or we do a similar thing, you know, we, they gave us an estimate to look at this PPA for 9,000, we set it at, we set it at 18 and ask them what they can give us inside that 18. I mean, it's, it's, I don't see how we don't you know, go into this knowing as much as we can. I mean, the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that are that are on that are on the on the line. Here. How do we make yeah. the best decision for our ratepayers, our customers? It's by gathering information that covers the subject. If you all had attended the KYMEA mm -hmm. meetings, you might have had some of your questions answered because <coughs> they were there. They answered them. They explained what was going on. Well, I've been with this process for three years now, and there's been a lot of back and forth. And I know that you're new to it, and you've only been here a few months, but there's been a lot of back and forth, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of information that's gone back and forth, and a lot of, uh, of, and it you know like what everything E3 says you love. Anything our own consultants tell us, and KYMA tells us, you don't like. Well, I think that's different. I think I think it's wrong to to characterize. You know, that's wrong. It's, it's been the well, from from my perspective, it is. I mean, you're 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 assigning a motive on me, and so I think I can say it's wrong if that's not my motive. Um, you know, I think it's different. You know, if you, if you bought a house, you know, you would ha you would do an inspection and you would understand what you're going into, and you know, that's not, you know, something negative towards the person you're buying the house from. That's <laughs> not something. You know, negative about the house. It's just prudent. You know, you're making. Well, you're house, making. I have confidence in KYMEA and our consult energy consultants. Right. Over these decades, I've got confidence in. Them. Right, but we know. I don't have any confidence in the San Francisco outfit. Well. Well, and how many house inspectors are you going to have inspect your house? You know, well, you have the first we, inspector do it, and you don't like what they said, and so you have another inspector do it. Well, we've Seems only like had we've only had one. We had E3 look at it. Well, then we and had Reed Smith look at it. We had Reed Smith look, take a different view on it to tell us how to maybe move forward with that. But, you know, to get, <coughs> you know, out of the politics and the revisionist <coughs> history some, you know, we had, you know, E3 look at it. And, you know, that was, you know, frankly, at the, at the completion of that exercise, you know, KYMEA, I believe staff and certainly the board were all in, a, in, a, in one of the best places we've been with KYMEA through this whole process. You know, last June, you know, there there was a lot of good, a lot of positive comments that came out of the the E3 study of KYMEA. There were still a lot of long-term concerns, and there were some cost concerns. Um, unfortunately, that didn't go in a positive direction. But you know, that wasn't you know it certainly wasn't you know an assault on KYMEA. It's it's you know here are the concerns, and you know as far as not having any confidence in E3, you know. Which part don't we agree with, right? I mean, you know, they, they, they pointed out that we bought too much capacity. KYMEA agrees we bought too much capacity. They pointed out that we, we spent too much money on the electricity we bought. KYMEA agrees they didn't pick, pick the, the lowest cost power supply. You know, the, there's, there's broad consensus on all, these, on all these options. And then you also see um, OMU just these past few weeks not deciding not to go with KYMEA and also citing the fact that KYMEA was higher cost, higher risk, and reduced local control. So you've got the founding member that also agrees with, with frankly, KYMEA and E3. But KYMEA had reasons. They were looking at more than just price <coughs> when they chose the power purchase agreements. They were also looking at reliability, and some other issues solely other than just price. So just because you say that they didn't get the cheapest, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. 
and some other <coughs> things to look at other than just price in the power purchase agreements. But I don't think they've ever explained to us what those other qualities are. They have in one-on-one -on -one conversations. I've spoken to them about one of the PPAs, and they noted that the reason they selected that particular PPA, and they admitted, and they acknowledged that it wasn't the lowest cost PPA, but their you know response to that was that that organization was willing to support um, the Joint Action Agency legislation in the in the in the legislature in the legislature. So they were willing to you know spend a little money on the a little more money on the power for the for the political support for the Joint Action Agency legislation. So it wasn't about power reliability, and it wasn't about you know any of those actual attributes for our customers. Since I didn't have the conversation, I have no comment on that. But regardless of all of that, you know, you know these are these are long, you know. You know, we're making decisions here that are going to affect you know, our rate payers for decades and decades and decades to come, long after we're gone. And, you know, the, the you know, history is going to judge us on this, and it's all the subjectivity is going to be gone. You know, we'll, we'll know here in a few months if, in fact, um, Kentucky went through one of the, the greatest growths in electricity um, over the last year of recent history. And in all likelihood, that's not going to be the case. And we'll know that those load, profile, those, load, those load forecasts aren't accurate. And that it will only make that gap that is between how much energy we bought and how much energy we need larger. Um, we'll also see where the market goes and, and where those energy prices go and where the fuel mix shifts. And we'll know that you know, shortly after 2022 when we start actually paying for this fuel and paying for this power. You know, all these things will be real. And they're all pretty real right now. We have very indicative data, we have good solid data, and there's wide consensus in all the data that we have. And it, to me, you know, the biggest failing here is not with KYMEA. I think the biggest failing is, is frankly with us, that we haven't done the appropriate amount of due diligence and the appropriate amount of scrutiny of these contracts, you know. I think, you know, Steve, you know, was, you know, held our feet to the fire during the budget session around, you know, the, the spending of the money for, you know, the, the, the Tanglewood uh, reparations. And, you know, while I disagree with the, the characterization of, of us not blinking, I think we went through a very deliberative process there. And we, frankly, from my perspective, picked the best of all bad options. Um, but, you know, here we are again, potentially not learning from the valuable lesson that actually was in the Tanglewood, that was to be able to gain, be gained from the Tanglewood thing, and that's proper planning and proper engagement. And, you know, when we make mistakes, you know, ultimately it's our rate payers that pay. And, you know, I think it's up to us, you know, to, to reduce the cost of our education on the rate, to the rate payers as, as, as much as possible. And if we make a bad decision, you know, we already know it's costing them tens of millions of dollars extra every year or tens of, 10 million and change extra every year, tens of millions over the course of the whole contract. You know, let's not make that worse, let's start making that better. And, you know, the other, the other data point there is, is that where we are right now, you know, come 2022, there's a big window for us to change course. There's a big window for us to improve the direction that KYMEA's power supply is going. There's a big window for us to, to improve those economics to our customers. And, without having that confidence that we're making that shift, that shift towards, you know, lower cost and more accountability and more local control, um, we're, we're destined to continue, you know, the, the quality and the cost of the contracts that we have. So I guess to close, I, I think it's really important that we get, you know, some, some independent you know, reliable industry expertise to guide us through making these really critical, very, very long-term, you know, decisions for our ratepayers. Did you all see the cartoon in the newspaper last week? Got a couple of archaeologists in the future looking back on our time trying to figure out what went wrong and what killed us all off. 
the conclusion that it was overpopulation of consultants. <laughs> Well, I would I would make a motion that we extend the E three contract to eighteen thousand dollars to cover the the analysis of the uh, solar PPA and to allow for the analysis of the uh, um, natural gas PPA when that's made available. I second that. Any further comments, discussion? I feel strongly that we should gather all the information we need in order to make this decision. That is our, um, and it's a decision from our perspective versus KYMEA's perspective. I see those as two different goals, two different set of guidelines, and that um, to not have the information to be able to make a decision that affects us for decades would be um, a lack of leadership in the board. Kathy, please call us one by member. Mr. Mason? No. Mr. Ludley? No. Ms. Hale? No. Mr. Baldwin? Yes. Ms. Ludley? Yes. Okay, motion failed. Um, call for a motion to adjourn. So I don't think we can. It's a special meeting. It has to do with E3. Um, well, we've got a motion to adjourn at this point. Do we have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. No, the meeting is not. Well, did you vote yes or no? <laughs> oh, okay. Did the motion to adjourn pass or not? I voted in favor. I'll vote with them to see what we have to say. Okay. Okay, so we're not closed. Go ahead. Well, I, I'll, so what stands with the E3 contract is that they will do what they can do for the four thousand dollars that has been said so i would like to make the motion that once that is done that the contract with e3 is closed I think it's already on the you've already oh, done that, yeah. is that already <laughs> it is done okay yeah. then i'll withdraw the motion then. then i'll make the motion that we adjourn a second Okay, we have a motion and a second that was Steve. To adjourn, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.